So if you want to find the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus alpha and s plus beta, you know you can rewrite this algebraically. You can break it down to some constant we'll call it a over s plus alpha plus b over s plus beta. Maybe I shouldn't use alpha and beta. Let's call K1, K2, so you're not confused, because I have B and beta. Let's call K1, K2. Some constant. And the question is, if I know what the value of that constant, I'm in good shape. Normally, in math, what you do is, so, well, you know, if, if this is equivalent to that, so if I find the LCD, and the reason I want to put it in this form, because if I know if this is really correct, if I know what K1, K2, I can take this problem and rewrite that as the inverse Laplace of K1 over S plus alpha. Remember, this integration, when you have integration of addition, you can break it down to two separate intervals, plus the inverse Laplace of K2 over S plus beta. And if you know what K1, K2, if you know what that is, it's going to be constant. If you take them outside, of 1 over S plus alpha, plus K2 is a constant, take it outside the integral, 1 s plus beta which means here's k1 what function has 1 plus i mean 1 over s plus alpha for laplace e to the negative at plus k2 what function has 1 over s plus beta for laplace e to the negative beta t so if I can take this and make it look like this, then I know the answer to it. The difficult part, how do you find what K1, K2? And normally the way we find K1, K2, we do algebra, like what? So now the question becomes just find K1, K2, and your solution is done. Well, how do we find that? Let me go on the next page. And look at this. I'm claiming that this is equal to this. Is equal to K1 over S plus alpha plus K2 over S plus beta. Well, if you want to add two fractions, what do you need? Common denominator, which is S plus alpha s plus beta. That means I gotta multiply this by s plus beta. This would be k1 s plus beta. This is s plus beta, I gotta multiply it by s plus alpha. So if you, fa if you multiply that k1 s, k1 beta, plus K2S, K2 beta. Equals one over The right side you can factor S out, you have K1 plus K2, and the constant is going to be what? Mm, one of them is alpha, right? Yeah. Is that an alpha? That's an alpha. Yep. Then look right. The constant, which is K1 beta plus K2 alpha. No, you know what alpha and beta they are given to you. You know what they are. 
So it looks like you have a lot of unknowns, but you really know alpha and beta. Those are numbers. So for this to equal to this, it says two things must happen. The coefficient of s on this side must equal the coefficient of s on this side, and the constant on this side must equal the constant on that side. Well, there is no s, that means I have what? Zero s. So zero must equal k1 plus k2. That's the first equation. And the other equation says one must equal k1 beta plus k2 alpha. Keep in mind, we know alpha and beta, so you have what? Two equations by how many unknowns? Two unknowns. We have two equations by two unknowns, and we can solve that using any method we want to. Now, we the engineers, we don't want to do it this way. We need to have distinct, simple roots. These are simple, different answers, not repeated, different. We don't want to do it this way. We say that's too much math involved. So once you reach this point, how do you figure what K1, K2? Notice I can solve for K1. This equation says to me K1 equals negative K2 from the top equation. And if I come back and plug it in, it says 1 equals what? K1 be and instead of K2, I'm going to pull what? Negative K1 alpha. Can you get what the K1 is? It's 1 over what? Beta minus alpha, right? And if I know what that is, can I figure out what K2 is? It's negative 1 over beta minus alpha. That negative, you bring it to the bottom, it really becomes 1 over alpha minus beta in this case. I don't want to do them this way. So here's my engineering way of doing it. See, I want to see if these answers, actually, my method works. So once I reach this point, I'm going to jump in quickly and find what K1 is without having to do all this math. Let me show you that math. Probably not. So let me write it down here so I don't have to keep going back and forth with two sheets of paper. So what's K1? To get K1, here's K1. Take this expression. What is K1 sitting on top of? S plus alpha? Go to this one, take that expression out of this. So take this one out. So what's left? 1 over S plus beta. Find the value of that when S equals. What value make the bottom of this zero? Negative alpha. Let's plug it in. One over negative alpha plus beta, which is what? One over beta minus alpha. Is that what we got for K1? Let me go back to mine. Simple, distinct root. Yep. If there's repeat, I have a different method for that. K1, 1 over beta minus alpha. See how quick? K2. K2 is sitting on top of S plus beta. So take S plus beta out of this one. You have 1 over S plus alpha. When S equals, what makes this one 0? Negative beta. 1 over negative beta plus alpha, 1 over alpha minus beta. Done. 10 times easier. Yes, it is. You'll learn the, the repeated one. Yeah, we'll do the repeated. Coming up. When is your test? It's today. Oh. Just in case you <laughs> It's a little bit longer, the problem with the repeated. Yeah. I don't want to get you confused with it. 
But that's the simple one. So let me take some examples with numbers in them and see how that works. Find the inverse Laplace of 7s plus 5 over s squared plus s. That's s. That's the only thing 5. The bottom you can factor it out with 7s plus 5 over if you factor an s out what's left s plus 1 right notice you have simple distinct root in the bottom here I should be able to write that something over s plus something over s plus 1 Well, since this is linear, the top is always going to be one degree lower than this. So if this is S, which is linear, what's lower than that? Zero degree. So these are constant. K1, K2. Notice K1 is sitting over S. So to find K1, we go to this expression. It's sitting over S. Take the S out of it. So it's 7s plus 5 over s plus 1 when s equals what? What value makes the bottom 0 here? Zero. 0. If s is 0, you have 5 over 1, which is 5. K2 is sitting on top of S plus 1. Take S plus 1 out of this. When S equals what? What value makes this one 0? Negative. negative 1. S is negative 1. What's 7 times a negative 1? Zero. Negative 7 plus 5. Negative 2. S is minus 1. What's the result? 2. So what's the inverse Laplace now of K, I mean K1, which is 5 over S plus 2 over S plus 1? Who has a Laplace of 5 over S? Just 5, Just five yep. 2. It's actually 5 u sub t, right? So if you want to be technically correct, 5 u sub t. The Laplace of u sub t is 1 over t. Plus 2e to the minus what? Negative, Negative 1t, yep. So when you clean it, sometimes you go 5 plus 2e to the minus t. And we just put u sub t at the end. A lot quicker. You could do it even if you have six of them. Let me see if I can get a long one. There's one. David, let's see. Uh, what is the inverse Laplace of 2 over s cubed plus 12 s squared plus 36 s? Let me change that number, the last number. Because I give me repeat roots. I didn't cover repeat it yet. Um, let's see, 36, 12. 18 and 2 is what? What's 18 and 2? 20? Let's do 20. So 
So if I factor the bottom, I know I can take an S out. What's left there? S squared plus 20S plus 36. Can I factor S squared plus 20S plus 36? 18 and 2, right? S plus 18, S plus 2. That means I can write that K1 over S, K2 over S plus 18, and K3 over S plus 2. Let me find K1, K2, K3, then I'm done. I know the inverse Laplace of each one of them. So to find S, notice K1 is sitting on top of S. Go to this one, take the S out. When S equals, what makes this one zero? Zero. 0 plus 18 is 18, 0 plus 2 is 2, that's 118. K2, K2 is sitting on top of S plus 18, take S plus 18 out of this. 2 over S times S plus 2, when S equals what? What makes it 0? Negative 18. Negative 18 times, what's negative 18 plus 2? Negative 16. Negative and negative, they cancel each other out. 1 over, and this will be 8 times 18. I'm dividing by 2 already. One forty four. And what's K three? K three is sitting top of S plus two. Oh, sitting top of S plus two. We said what? Take the S plus two out of it. When S equals what? Negative 2? Negative 2 plus 18 is that 16? What's that? Negative 116? So here we go. The answer is going to be K1, which is 118, the inverse Laplace of 1 over S. I factor out K1 out. K2, I'm factoring out 1 over 44, the inverse Laplace of 1 over S plus 18, 144, not 44, minus 1 over 16, the inverse Laplace of what? 1 over s plus 2. This is u sub t. I just leave, I put it outside. 1 over 18 times 1, which is 1 over 18, plus 1 over 144, e to the minus 18t, minus 1 over 16, e to the minus 2t, u sub t. Voila. Next time we'll learn repeated roots. Okay. Yep. Now.